we are going to be speaking with um we're going to be looking at your dress codes here at summit university uh we're going to be speaking with um the committee on dress codes here at summit university and like i said like we said uh, before we have rules and regulations and um the dress code is also part of our rules and regulations and you um you are expected as as students to um abide by the rules and regulations of of this um um, university um so they, um, the, my next speaker here would be um telling you more about how to dress and what are the um dress codes that are expected of you um in the university so um she is with us now uh, we're having two sessions for the dress code one for the female student and also one for the male students so uh because they say ladies first we'll have the uh, female um, section first before we have the male section. So we're still while we still wait for them. Um, let me also take this time to appreciate everyone who has joined us today. Uh, today is about the last day of presentations, and after this, we we'll take the male version, and then we will be looking to call it a wrap for this uh, program for this session. So, okay, so. You have the floor now. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you on today's edition of the orientation program. Up, you can see my slide. So once again, I want to join others to congratulate you on your admission into Summit University, a university where we pride ourselves on the triple helix mantra of knowledge, skills, and morals. So I bet all these days you've been oriented on the different skills and knowledge you can acquire. So for today, I'll be dwelling much on the moral aspects of the university. So we not only talk about skills, yeah, we are also interested in your morals. So my name is Ali Mat Yusuf Lukman, a faculty member of the Department of Chemical Sciences. And I'll be speaking to you on visual appearance beyond rhetorics. How are you expected to appear? The moderator said earlier that we have several rules and regulations guiding your stay in the university. And we all know the regular saying that where there is no law or rule, there is no crime. But that doesn't appeal, apply here. So within the next few minutes, I'll be speaking on the visual appearance, how you're expected to appear as a student of Summit University. So the talk will entail an overview, Islamic perspective on dressing, Islam, Nigeria and Summit University, Summit University dress code, and acceptable and unacceptable dressing on campus. So the overview. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran said, Oh children of Adam, surely we have bestowed upon you a garment to cover your shame as well as to be an adornment to you. The garment of party is the best. So this Quranic verse is telling us the essence of dressing is forced to cover our shame. If you can remember the story of Prophet Adam and Awa in paradise, we were meant to know that initially they were naked, but they were not aware of their naked status, not until Shaitan deceived them into eating the forbidden fruit. When they ate this, they now they became aware of their nakedness and they became ashamed of themselves. Then Allah revealed this chapter and, and 
provided them with a garment to cover the shame. So covering their shame is not only for covering purpose alone, but for them to be pious, to be of Almighty Allah as a means of them actually knowing that they've sinned and they need to, to be pious of Allah. So Islamic perspectives on dressing. There are several rules and regulations guiding the way we dress. You know, Islam, um, the Quran, as revealed by Allah, we tell us what to do. Why the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? We tell us how to do it. What has been what we are supposed to do? The Sunnah is there to explain how we are to do it. So several Quranic chapters as talked about the way a, a, a males and females should appear in Islam. So, for example, we have Quran 7, verse 31 to 33, Quran 24, verse 31, and so on. Then we have the Adjits of Trimidhi, Bukhari, and Muslim that is guiding us on the way we should appear. So for the sake of my presentation, I will be dwelling on the dress code for women, while my other colleague will be speaking on that of the men. So dress code for women in Islam. In Quran 33, verse 59, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Prophet Muhammad, Kulli azwajika wa banatika wa nisa ili mu'minin. Bidnina ali inna min jalabi bidna. Dhalika hadna an yurafna fala yuzayna. Bakano law gafuran rahima. O Prophet, tell your wives, your daughters, and the women of the believers to draw their jilbab all over the bodies. That will be better. They should be known, so not be aware. Not, not be annoyed, and Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. So this verse is revealed to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to direct his wife, daughters, and the women believers on how they should appear, how they should cover their body, not to expose any part that is known as aura. So is a verse revealed to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and is a popular verse that we know. So importance of dressing, just like I said in the overview that dressing helps to protect our shame. So as it is, dress code protects the society and promotes modest dressing and behavior. So just like I said, there are several rules and regulations that Islam has presented to us on how to dress. So when we dress according to this dictate, we appear modest and it will be a guiding principle to how we behave in the society. So when we dress accordingly, you will see that the, the environment will be sanctified, there will be peace, there will be calmness, and there will be protection from all the social vices that we have. Then there is also this popular saying that the way you dress, the way you are addressed. So it's not, not only Islam that emphasizes the way we need to appear physically. There are the intellectual, the psychological aspects too that is telling us that once you are modest in your dressing, you definitely command respect for yourself. So Islam, Nigeria, and Summit University. I've talked a lot about the Islamic rulings on dressing. What about um, then coupled with the fact that we are from diverse cultural and religious background? So at Summit University, we are noting that too. As a Nigerian, okay. Nigerian also prides itself as a very rich cultural heritage country. So, and from um, when we look at it from a Yoruba perspective, you know, we have different languages the Yoruba, Igbo, and outside the popular ones. So, as a Nigerian, woman you know the way we dress is to wear a uh, euro buba gele and ikwele if i know you are, you are familiar with what i'm saying so nigeria as a country do, doesn't shy away from modest dressing too so if we if you feel as if what we are saying islamically is out of tune or if you are not um um if you are not a muslim by religion but we are all nigerians 
So we can also look into this um, aspect. So at Summit University, we try to revive an Islamic dress code in a Nigerian and modern fa fashion. Just like I said, if you are not a Muslim, you are definitely a Nigerian, though we can have other international students with us. But the overall um, aim of the dress code is to, is to have a modest environment, for us to dress modestly and for us to have protection. So Summit University dress code. So just like we have been established that there are several rules and regulations guiding the way we appear at Summit University. In the next few slides, I'll be taking you through how you should appear at Summit University. What we are bringing on board is not something new, it's not something different from others. It's just like a kind of remembrance on how we ought to appear as students of Summit University. So this slide is showing the acceptable mode of dressing. So just like you know that Summit University is a faith-based university. So as a Muslim, you are allowed to appear in any form of the displayed picture you have. So you can use a burqa. A burqa means you can appear um, in your body fully covered, while the face is also covered with a mesh screen. Or you can use a niqab. A niqab is a veil for the face, but the face will remain visible. You can also use a hijab or a scarf that will cover the head and the neck. Then you can also use an al-amira. So it's two pieces of a scarf that we are familiar with, the one with the inner and the outer one that covers the inner. Then you can use a kimar. A kimar is a cape-like covering the ear, neck, and shoulders. So you see the way these people are, are displayed none of their air or their um their head is exposed they are well covered so we know we have students from other religious background so this picture shows the way we expect you to appear so the first dressing if you don't feel like covering your ear you can appear in something like this but what i want you to note is that the dress that will be worn by such female must be loose it must be free you you are not allowed to wear tightly fitted clothes to school shape revealing body are not allowed look at the second picture you can see the lady is covering her neck so if you feel you don't want to use hijab you have to use a head covering that will cover your neck you don't expose your neck not to talk of exposing your bosom there are times where you wear top that the, it may be a V-lined top. So when you wear such kind of top, you are supposed to cover it such as your chest is not exposed. Then your sport attire. As a female, you can appear in something like this. But take one point here. You can see that the head is well covered. And... The trouser is long. And you know that um, we have several female athletes these days, Islamic female athletes that dress modestly and decently on the field. So this picture, picture is a typical descri descri um, description of how you can look as a female that is engaged in sports. So you'll be on your long track suit trouser and a long top that we cover your waist that goes down your waist so you don't wear sportswear that will reveal the shape of your body your buttocks and the legs all those parts are called aura they are supposed to be covered so if you want to dress for sports you can see the way these two pictures are, are appearing so you are permitted to appear like that so what are the unacceptable mode of dressing at Summit University? So at Summit University, we do not encourage or allow cross-dressing. You know what cross-dressing is? A male appearing like a female or a female appearing like a male. So you are not allowed to appear in such. Then you are not allowed to wear tightly fitted dresses. <clears throat> no matter the way you are dressing, whether a Muslim or a Christian, you should wear free 
dresses. We don't want shape revealing dresses. We want a modest kind of dressing that will bring protection and respect to you. Then, like I said, your aura. Aura means the sensitive part of the body. So all those sensitive parts of the body must be well closed. You don't reveal them, must be well protected. Then air styles. So we are all female. We are bound to make several air styles. So if you are making air style, you are now you're not allowed to leave the ear to go beyond your collar. Um, so we don't want ear style that will reach the waist. So if you want to make ear, or if you have made such kind of ear when you are coming to classes, you try to do not eat, to roll it, and you pack it well under your hijab. And likewise, unnecessary dyeing. Hmm? Even if you have dyed your ear, pack it such that it will not be revealed when you come to the academic arena. Then display of accessories of symbolic accessories. The use of no string is a form of excessive dressing. It's not allowed on campus. So you are displaying excessive accessory or dress. Or when you use leg chain, please. As we said earlier, where there is no rule, there is no crime. So we are trying to let you know all the such that when you are coming to school, you will know how to pack your bag and baggages. Then generally now, or oh, let me summarize what I've been saying. As a bona fide and responsible student of Summit University, when you are coming to the academic area, we expect you, you to appear in your university identification card. So anytime you are provided with the ID card of the university, you should always have it on and you should appear in approved attires and footwear so wearing all sorts of maybe bedroom slippers or some footwear that are not um official or formal in nature are not allowed and then you do not display excessive accessories or jewelry so you wear approved jewelry then the all what i've said you can find the details on the university website they they can be found on the student handbook which will be made available on the university website so at summit university look at this young beautiful and vibrant lady on the picture you can see the way she's dressed isn't she global enough can she go anywhere internationally and be discountenance or addressing not not accepted so when you see her she's islamically dressed because you see she all her parts all the parts of her body are covered and then as um a nigerian too she's re representing a true nigerian and then she is representing a summit university student so when you come on campus you can appear so this is just like a picture of how you can appear don't you like her so please, when you come to Summit University, we'd like mm. you to, to, to adopt, mm? or if you want to make it better, for at least to be a bona fide and a global student, such that you can go anywhere in your appearance, you command respect. So just like I said in the beginning of the, of the talk, at Summit University, you will not only acquire skills, nor knowledge, your moral, will be also looked into thank you for listening all of you ah uh, thank you very much uh, this is alima uh, yusuf lukman um you um she has been able to uh, speak to us on um she has been able to speak to us on the dress code for female students uh, in the university and you know, say a very comprehensive um, outlook into how females are expected to dress here at Summit University. Don't forget that um, we say that Summit University is a faith-based university and we of course expect our students to be um, um, disciplined and also dressed in line with the university rules and regulations. Uh, we do not take um any compromise when it comes to um the way that our students represent us and of course uh dress the way you want to be addressed uh we need to also dress modestly and because we now talk about um how the way that our society is and also some of these are as a result of 
out of the dressing that that people both um, genders now um, go through and we here we try to um, instill um, that discipline of how uh, you should dress as a responsible uh, person for our male students our next speaker would be uh, speaking to us on how to also dress modestly as a male student uh, while we wait for him to share his slide uh, let me also say very big thank you to Mrs. Alima yusuf Lukman. I don't know if any of our female students have any questions for her um, before she takes her leave. Um, if you have any questions regarding the dress codes, uh, please. Um, um, okay, so we have the next uh, presenter ready for us now, and it's going to be speaking on the dress code for male students. Is Mr. Arikel Kamaldin Ahmad from the Department of Mass Communication. Good morning to you all. Uh, this morning, I will be presenting on dressing code. But before that, my name is Kamal Din Arikewio Ahmad from Summit University. Yes, the program uh, titled Visual Appearance Beyond Rhetoric. I want to talk on how it is expected of you as students of Summit University to be dressing while on campus. Yes, I have presentation outline. For my outline, the first in overview, the Islamic views on dressing, mode of dressing for men in Islam, importance of dressing, importance of decent dressing, acceptable and un unacceptable dress code, samples of acceptable and unacceptable dress code in Summit University. From the overview, the God Almighty, command Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the Noble Quran to tell the believing men that they shall subdue their eyes and not stare at the women, and to maintain their chastity. He said this is pure for them, that God is fully cognizant of everything they do. In another verse of the Quran, the God Almighty told Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he told every mankind that oh children of adam you shall be clean and dressed decently and nicely when you go to the masjid the verse verse of the quran that i read is in quran chapter 24 verse 30 to 31 and the second one is chapter 7 verse 31 all these are pointing to how men is expected to be dressing in Islam. Now, the Islamic views on dressing. I will be bringing out some hadiths that talks about the Islamic views on dressing. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, there was a time he was going and he saw Ali wearing two garments, dyed with sunflower and said, these garments are of the unbelievers. Do not wear them. This taught us that there are some dressing that is not expected of a believer to be dressing in Islam. That this dressing that is not expected of a believer to be dressing are associated and identified with unbelievers. It is also said in another attitude that it is around for men to imitate women. Way they dress, the Prophet وسلم, peace be upon him, calls the men who imitate women and the women who imitate men while dressing. In another sunnah of the Prophet, it is sooner for Muslims to start dressing with the rights, and it is sooner for all Muslim to start with the right when dressing and to say bismillah in the name of Allah, to start with the left when taking off the clothes. Now, this 
is an example of a mode of dressing for men in Islam. You can see this light, you can see this man in suits, and you can see this one in native attire. This is an acceptable dressing in Islam and it's also acceptable in Soviet University. Now, importance of dressing or importance of decent dressing. Now, decent dressing keeps you disciplined. When you are dressing decently, you'll be kept disciplined. People will know you for a disciplined man. And it increases your confidence. Decent dressing also command full and appropriate respect over you. It also guards you, it guards your senses from anything that may lessen your innocence. It also maintains the dignity of men. It protects the society and also promotes good behavior. Now, acceptable dress code for men in Summit University. As a, female, as a male student, what are the expected mode of dressing for you? As you can see this slide, the first one there is that male students in Summit University shall at all times display the university identification card when on campus. Male students' attire must be reasonably decent in accordance with the local custom or corporate environment and shall cover the hour of the May. The male students may wear shirts and collar t-shirts when attending classes and the shirts and collar t-shirts shall at all material times be tucked in in the trousers. Male students are encouraged to wear complete traditional dresses, provided that they do not violate or infringe the Sunno dress code and Islamic values and norms. Now, unacceptable dress code for male students in Summit University. These, if you are found in any of these dress that I'm about to quote out, then you shall be identified as students that are unserious, students that are not disciplined, to students that dress indecently on campus, and there are penalties for that. So it is in your own interest to get acquainted with all of these unacceptable dress code. One of them is that no male student shall wear attires which have seductive, provocative, or detrimental designs, images, words, or phrases in the university premises. Male students are not allowed to wear any accessories which symbolize any particular external organization, group, or except on certain proper occasions and with permission from the university authority. No male shall wear necklace and bracelets except for medical purposes and identification. No male students are not allowed to wear jeans that are tight fitting, multicolor, faded, and fancy in design, rag, crazy in nature, torn, or with patches in the university. Slippers, non-strip sandals, and slip-on shoes are prohibited to be worn by male students during the official university functions and other formal activities. The length of the hair of a male shall not extend beyond the collar and the hairdo, shall not be of unusual or extraordinary style. Male students are prepared to tie or color his or her his hair unnecessarily. These are samples of acceptable dress code in Summit University. You can see uh, these people dressing, and you can see this one is tucked in with his shirt. This one tucked in and is also untied. And you can see the shoes. You can see them in sandals that has a uh, row. And you can see the uh, native attire dressing. If you are dressing in native attire, it has to be complete. You can see those that are dressing there, and you can see the dress that they appear in. And this kind of uh, dressing is what we encourage in Summit University. Now, these are samples of unacceptable dress uh, dressing is that we do not condone with in Summit University. 
You can see this one tuck in part of his shirt and leave fly out the other one. And you can see this one that turned the cap that is wearing back and is turning the back to the front. These are examples of unacceptable dress code. You can see this one in jean, and you can see that the jean is torn somehow. This is also an example of unacceptable dress code that we do not condone with in Summit University. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, very much. Mr. Kamal Dean Arikirio Ahmad for, for that beautiful presentation. Um, he has also been able to speak with us on the dress code for male students in the university. Uh, so we've had uh, both sides of the coin. We've had for male students and also had for female students. Uh, I want to know if anybody has any question regarding this dress code uh, from our presenters or from any of our presenters so far. Uh, we're about to round up the program for um, today and also for in general for the entire program itself. Uh, it's been a pleasure um, having you here for the past um, 10 working days and to discuss all everything that we have here at Summit University of uh, um, I want to know if anybody has any question, comments, contributions. How has the program been like for you? What have been your highlights of the program? Uh, what are you most looking forward to here at Summit University? And uh, these are some of the things that I would want some of you to be answering me. Uh, don't forget that you can always rewatch these um, um, uh, videos on our YouTube page. You can always watch these um, videos on our YouTube page. You can follow us on all our social media pages, and you can also keep in touch with us on our Facebook, on our Twitter, Instagram, and also on TikTok. Um, now, let's. I don't know if we can have just uh, you know a closing chat with Aisha Kazim. Um, Aisha Kazim, I don't think I've I've had a chat with you before. Uh, let Let's have a quick chat. Uh, let me know what department that you are in and what you're most looking forward to about resumption here at Summit University of Ar Aisha Kazim, if you can hear me, please unmute your microphone. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Hello, Aisha Kazim. Ah, good morning. How are you doing today? Can you, can you speak up a little? Can you, can you speak up a little? I can't hear you. Okay. Um, I can't hear you. Uh, I'll return that again. Um, moving on. I don't know if there's also. I, I, I Kazim, I cannot hear you. Um, I'm sorry, I have to meet you now. Um, I don't know if there's any other person who wants to, if you have any questions, general questions, specific questions and um, clarifications that you need, uh, whatever it is that you'd like to ask me. Uh, it's been amazing having all of you here with us um, today. And also for the past two weeks that we've been on this program, I want to say a very big thank you to you, to all of our facilitators, uh, from the vice chancellor to uh, the uh, principal officers, down to the staffs, and also the students, and also even parents that have joined us on this program today. Um, my team here uh, in the studios, they've worked tirelessly. They've had to cut short their sleeps and uh, keep preparing for the next program. Uh, we've had a lot of um, um, things, but we're glad that it's worth it and um, that you are here is a show that we have been able to impact you uh, positively and to um, give you reasons why Summit University is the only choice for you, is the best and the only choice for you. So uh, we'll be taking, I don't know if there's anybody who wants to ask any question, nobody for now. Uh, we'll be taking the um, closing remarks from uh, Dr. Asimi Murano. He'll be speaking on behalf of the Vice Chancellor. Uh, Professor Abiodun Musa Ibinu. Uh, so we would be um, taking his closing remarks uh, before uh, we call it a day here today. 
Um, Dr. Morano, if you can hear me, please unmute your microphone. Um, okay, you he cannot hear me. Uh, Dr. Morano, okay. I, think I can hear you. Alhamdulillah, 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 Rabbi Alamin. We have come to the end of a Summit University 2022 orientation program. And on behalf of the Vice Chancellor, Engineer Professor Abiodun Musa Haibino, I want to congratulate our first students and formally welcome you to Summit University offer. I am sure you really enjoyed this two weeks orientation program that is laced with enlightening, educative, informative, and entertaining activities of our faculty members, anchored by one of our scholars from the Department of Political Science, Ibrahim Akiola Salawu. By now, you must have known what Summit University is championing, that is developing innovation and infection that will be changing the way we live in our community, defend our nation, and work in Africa. Summit, everything we do at Summit University is student center. And at Summit University, you must be sure of having 21st century skills before your graduation. We cannot wait to receive you on campus, and I wish you a resounding success in your academic sojourn at Summit University offer. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Ah, thank you very much. Uh, the Director of Academic Planning at Summit University of, uh, uh, he has just spoken on behalf of the Vice Chancellor, um, Professor Abiodu Musa Aibinu. Ah, so what more can I say? It's been two amazing weeks of being with you here um, on this program. And I can say that I'm so excited to um, welcome all of you. I look forward to having all of you here on campus. And uh, I wish to also, uh, maybe, maybe after a month of you here at Summit University, you can uh, maybe come to me and come and tell me if some of what you think about the orientation program and uh, to what extent have you um, seen some of these things happen on campus. Uh, talk about the student affairs, talk about the offer community itself and, and Lex. I'm sure that you're going to have a great time here in offer for the next four years or next three years of your direct entry students. Uh, we we'll, we'll look forward to really having you here with us. Uh, I'm sure that apart from your degrees, you're also going to be acquiring seven skills. Don't forget. Uh, uh, the Islam and global citizen skills, academic history, heritage, and storytelling, um, ICT skills, artificial intelligence, clean and renewable energy, and also family and leadership skills. These are some of the skills I also have for you here at Summit University. In addition to the degrees that you would be getting from us here uh, in the university, Summit University, I will pride ourselves as training uh, students in line with Industry 4.0, but training students in line with the fourth industrial revolution uh, with the use of technology and the use of ICT. And you've you've heard it all from all of our facilitators over the past uh, two weeks. Uh, we've uh, been able to give you nothing but the best. And I assure you that this quality also transcends into our daily lives. Ah, it's been a pleasure to, to have hosted you like once again. Uh, and on behalf of my team, special recognition to Mr. Uh, Teslim uh, Mutiulai, uh, known as Tesco, Mrs. Afolabi Ganiad, uh, Ismail, also Mrs. Afol uh, Afolabi, Mrs. Mohamed, and every member of, of the back room. So also the special recognition to the mass communication uh, team who have been editing our videos and putting them on the university YouTube page. Uh, also, special recognition to everyone, all of our facilitators, uh, from the deans to the uh, HODs to the faculty members to the different units that we have here, and all our students also who have been here and who have joined us uh, far away from here. Uh, we want to say a very big thank you to you. We look forward to having you on campus from myself and my team. My name is Ibrahim Salawi. You can check me and the Department of Political Science, Summit University of Fire, and you can always uh, reach out to me if you have any questions via the WhatsApp group. 
um, I'll be glad to answer your questions. Uh, so from me and all of my team, uh, all of us at Summit University, we look forward to welcoming you um, next week. And thank you so much for being part of this with us. And we look forward to seeing you. Have a great day. Bye bye. OK, Aisha Kazim wants to. OK, please unmute your microphone and speak. Aisha Kazim, please omit your microphone and speak, please. If you, you raised up your hand. Okay, uh, she's not speaking. So I uh, like, want to say a very big thank you to all of you. We wish you a very um, um, great day, great weekend. And it's a wrap from me and my team here. See you later. Bye-bye. Assalamu alaikum wa